So this is a new video on Storybook with Ionic Framework and yes, actually Angular. It's been a minute since I did an Angular video, but I had written a post on this a while ago and someone pinged me and said, hey, the post doesn't work anymore. Can you upgrade it for seven? So I figured, hey, how hard can it be? And also it'd be interesting to see how far Angular's come. So just the, let's see, here's the basic application. All it is is an Ionic application with a card, and a card has some information. Uh, potentially, like if you had a website that had um, a list of folks who were in your company, this is the type of card you might use. Um, it's a pretty straightforward Angular application. Let's see if I can find it here. Um, it's got, it's called Member Card Component. Uh, let's look at the um, HTML. Hopefully this is big enough. Just the Ionic card has, uh, has the basic information for the user and has buttons for each one of the user's social media, which appear and disappear based on whether or not the user has values entered for them. Um, if you wanted to dig even further, what you would do, and here's a scenario where you would use Storybook, is if I wasn't part of a company, what does this UI look like now? If I don't have a title, what does this UI look like now? Um, so with Storybook, you can kind of lay out each one of those stories and make sure your UI supports it and verifies. So this is the component. Um, and, you know, before I move on and kind of show how I did this, I just wanted to say to folks, please make sure you like and subscribe and leave comments if there's other interesting videos that you would like to see. So now that we've seen what the application is, um, Let's just pop back here for a minute to Storybook for folks who don't know what Storybook is. It's a front-end workshop for building UI components at pages in isolation. So basically, you can create all your components separate from the application, update the styling, test them, and do a whole bunch of other things without actually being inside of the application. Um, you can pass properties to your object. You can get events from your objects, and I'll be showing both of those in this example. Um, there's way more you can do with Storybook. This is, I'm just kind of touching the surface, so if you're interested in seeing more, once again, please leave a comment and let me know. All right, so let's go back and getting started. So to get started inside of your project, so I've already done this. I'm just gonna kind of step you through what I did to get it here. I will provide all the source code for you also. So basically all you need to do is go into your root project and type npx storybook at latest init and Storybook will run, it will do its thing, and it will set up your project to support Storybook. That's all you need to do. Now, the next step is you need to do some configuration um, to the output from uh, the Storybook command to get your application to work properly. I've also included all of those instructions in a readme that's with the project. And so we can kind of march along here. And so the first change that you need to make is to the Angular JSON file. And what will happen is after you've run Storybook init, it has modified the Angular JSON file and created the Storybook object inside of the Angular. Let's go. Let's, actually, let's just go to the file. It, it has created this Storybook entry for you. Now, the additional information that I needed to add, because it was not there, was the information on the assets. So to let the builder know where it can find assets. Also to let it to know where you can find the Ionic icons. And then also to let it know where to define the default styles. So what will happen is your style sheet will be imported, will be included by default. All of your icon, Ionic icons will be included by default. And any assets that you have in the assets directory will be included by default in your story. So you don't need to worry about importing them at all. Okay. Then the next thing is, um, I'll skip this decorator one. The one that I'm going to touch on that's more important is some issues that I that I ran into. And also, I solved this issue, so, so ignore that. I'll remove that. This is the issue I ran into when I was actually trying to run the um, Storybook server. I was getting this, this error. I have no idea why I got it. Um, I haven't done a lot of Angular, and I didn't want to spend a bunch of time digging into it. But the way I did resolve it was by modifying my um, tsconfig.json. And so let's just hop over to that for a minute. And 
what I did was where where is actually the value that I changed? Hmm. It said I need to change skip. Uh, the skip live check is uh, what I actually changed. This skip live check to true in my tsconfig.json. So tsconfig.json compiler options. Hmm. tsconfig. I thought this is where I did it. Hmm. Let's go back. Let's see. Yeah, the S config. Let's see, where did I put it somewhere else? Oh, I, yeah, I ended up putting um, it inside. I put it inside a TS config that app that JSON. I, I could have put it inside a TS config. It will work either place. But the whole idea is you need to put this skip live check to true to avoid that error. That's only if you run into the error when compiling. Um, and so I wanted to leave a note for that for you. Let's close that and let's get back to kind of the readme. Um, so we've already updated the angular.json. Now let's look at a, at a basic story. So uh, this is my storybook running. And you run, you get storybook started by uh, using this new command that gets added to your uh, package.json. And just call uh, npm run storybook and it will fire everything up for you. And so that's what I did. And so here's my story book server running. And it's my my uh, card, member card component. And I have two stories in it. One is the primary where it kind of data is provided for everything. And the other one's to show you what your card will look like if you're missing some of the social information. So you can see the other buttons don't show. And that's, that's all. That's what the story was testing. Um, so that's that so now let's actually take a look at our story and kind of how you set up your story so if we go into a story let's format this if you go into I think I can make it one more can I make it one more bigger yeah let's make it a little bit bigger so if you go into a story Let's just focus on the changes that need to be made. So here, you need to import your component. So I've imported the component. You need to import Ionic module. And then we're going to use this function from Angular Core to help us get the Ionic module into the story as a provider. And you can see this is TypeScript. So up here at the top, it changes to my member card component. Uh, this is the title of how the, car, uh, how the story will appear in Storybook. So you can see in Storybook here, it's under projects and then member card component. That's just the naming. You can name this anything you want. It makes sense to kind of name it at least to include the name of the actual component that you have in the storybook. And then here I actually define the component. And then down here, these are the arguments that we're going to get pat that we can pass into my component. And my component does. So let's go back to my component. My component does get passed into this uh, parameter called member info, um, which is the information that we want to pass in about um, the member that we're rendering. And so this um, the args the args allow us to pass these properties in as arguments. Also down here for arg types, we have um, the ability to respond to actions, and so we have a um, on click event that happens when you click on any one of these buttons here. So you see when I click on website, you see this action gets fired. And so that's what this on click is doing. It's tracking this click event. And let's go back to my component. So you can see here on the click, I emit this on click event. I could change this to some other name. I can call it a social media click, but the whole point is that I'm tracking my events. I'm tracking my events in my story and I'm able to get the results from them. So in this example, uh, you can see I clicked on a website. So it's saying that social event, social click is the event 
and the value is the basically the website to go to. And if you go to the primary one, and you can see on LinkedIn, well, not LinkedIn's a bad one, but on the Twitter, when I click on Twitter, you can see the value is a Twitter URL. So that's what this is doing. It's allowing me to test uh, events from inside of my story. This is the decorators part. It basically, whatever decorator is, it follows a decorator pattern, which means it kind of wraps around the whole story. And one of the important things that we want to do is for the application configuration, we clearly need to import the Ionic module. And so this is how you import it. Like I said, you use this import providers from function from Angular Core. And we take the Ionic module and we're going to import it in as a provider. Then in the module metadata, we need to make our declarations for components we need. We're only using the member card component. And then this is the content wrapper decorator. We want our story to be wrapped inside of the Ion app component. And so I just wrap it Ion app component and the story will be placed inside of that when it's rendered. And then down here, once again, you define the story type, the member card component. And then, um, like I said, here's more information on writing stories with arguments, but we just wrap that around. All we're doing is you define the argument that gets passed into the component. And let's see it in the HTML page that you understand how it gets passed in. So if we go to our home of HTML, you can see the argument that gets passed into my app member card is member info. And so now let's go back to my story. So that's all this is saying. This is just the argument. Here's the properties that are in that um, member info that's going to get passed in. And that's it. And to render your story. So I've named this primary story. So that's the one that has all the values. So that's what you're seeing in primary. And for missing social, we can just go down here and we can look at miss, missing social story. And we can see that it is missing the social. And so that's kind of how what this story is testing. I mean, I could create another one just so you can get the hang of what we're doing here is... We could go down here and we could say no company. And then we could work on what does this look like when there's no company name provided. So I remove this company name from here. Um, no news, missing company name here. Just so that we can see there's some different information getting rendered. And we just have our website. And um, let's say this is um, COO, and we can change this to my COO, D and I, Denise Saunders, not my wife, uh, my sister. And then when we go back to our story, we, 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 and let's refresh this. Sorry, let's refresh this. So now we have our primary story with everything, we have our missing social story, which is it's missing a couple of social media links, and then we have a scenario here where there's no company. So this is an example of now I see when there's no company, I get this extra thing in front that I don't want. And so ideally, now what I can do is I can go into my component, there's my member card component, and I can actually make modifications of this component without kind of running my whole application so I can test this standalone. And so um, I'll just do something kind of a hack for now. But basically what we can say is that, um, let's, let's just wrap this in a div. And we can do an if we remember info company name. And so now what should happen, it should only display this information if, let me kind of clean this up a bit. So now it'll only display that and the little, um, in the colon if I have a company name. So you can see now it's cleared up. And so missing social one I have. Oh, I don't want to div. Uh, let's make this a span. But you see just what's happening. Like I can test this in real time without um, having to rebuild my whole application.
right? So, and then when there's no company, we just lose that. Let's see. Yeah, when there's no company, it gets all cleaned up properly. And then, you know, obviously you probably want to um, do something for when, there, well, when there's no title, it's okay. But if there's no company and no title, we probably want to just remove the whole subtitle, right? But what all I really wanted to show you is how easy it is to use Storybook to kind of test your um, UI and kind of clean up things um, without going through that whole cycle of rebuilding your whole application. Like I said, I just kind of touched the surface of the things you can do. If there's a lot of interest in this video, um, I will do another one and kind of go in deeper detail on some things. But check, there'll be a link in the video with a um, project. So you'll, I'll give you access to all the source code. And I think the README, I was going to write a blog post, but I think the README kind of covers all the highlights. Maybe I'll do a blog post anyway, but please, you know, thanks for stopping by. And we will see you next time. Bye.